Hi everyone, my name is Kyle Nee and I'll be your instructor this semester for business statistics. Let's take a look at our course syllabus right now so we can get a better sense of what to expect throughout the coming semester. You can find the syllabus by clicking on this syllabus tab over here at the left side. And when I click this, I'll have a PDF here that I can open to see the actual document. Now a couple things to note here right off the bat is that if you need to get a hold of me this semester, one of the easiest ways to do that is going to be either through my email, you can email me here, please be aware this is kne one um, or you can uh, meet me during my office hour times, which for our class will be typically scheduled from Monday to Thursday, so Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, from 1 to 2 p.m. Now if those times don't work for you because you're at work or you're busy during those times for whatever reason, you have another class or something, we can always try to set up other times to meet. But these are just going to be some standing times, and I'll talk about more in a later video in this introduction section about how office hours will work. But one of the most ineffective ways, unfortunately, to get a hold of me will be through my office phone, since I'm not on campus myself. Um, now, a couple other things here in the syllabus that we'll talk about will really just hit the highlights here. I'm going to expect that you'll read through the rest of this kind of in full. But some of the other major highlights here are just going to be some course materials. For my course, there is no required textbook. You shouldn't have purchased anything for this course. If you have, then hopefully you can easily return it. But there's nothing that you need to purchase for this class. Everything has been created by me, and so that should hopefully uh, make everything very streamlined and also um, very cheap. So that's very nice. Um, the other thing is that we're going to be using a calculator, either a TI-83 or a TI-84. Um, and you might even be able to find versions of those as emulators online, potentially. Uh, but I'll leave that to you to see if you can find one. I have not been able to find one that I haven't been able to pay for yet. Um, the other thing is that uh, we will be taking a lot of notes in this class. Even though this is an online class, um, taking notes is an extremely important part of this course. And so it will be very valuable for you uh, to have somewhere to store these. And so I highly recommend have some sort of a folder or three ring binder or something like that going for the lecture notes that we'll have. Um, a couple other things is uh, we have here listed out the withdrawal dates for the class. Uh, those aren't for me to know, those are for you to know. I have no control over dropping you uh, from the course, so please make sure you're aware of those in case you need to get money back or make sure that you withdraw with the W at some point. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and kind of skip all the way down here to just kind of generally what our course is going to feel like on a kind of day-to-day -day and week-to-week -week basis. So here's kind of the basic rundown. We're going to have video lectures that are going to cover every single section that we are going to cover in this class. Now those lectures have been posted to YouTube already, and you'll be receiving a schedule of what it is that you should be watching on each day of the semester. And this is located on the course calendar um, in Blackboard, and we'll talk about that more again in a later video. So um, this course calendar is going to follow that standard four-day format as if we were meeting face-to-face, -face. but if you need to, you can stretch out the things that are... Um, uh, given to you for a four-day format into a full week format if that fits better for you. Um, the second part of our class after watching video lectures is that I'm going to be providing you with lots of worksheets and solutions to those worksheets. And these are really meant to kind of take the place of what would be kind of standard book problems that you will use to practice with. So worksheets here are never going to be things that I'm going to collect for a grade. They are only things that you do to try to make sure that you better understand the material. And it's the second thing on the list here. This is a very important part that a lot of students skip and then they end up maybe not doing as well as they would like on homeworks and exams. Um, the third thing is that as you have questions, uh, you know, you've watched the videos, you practice the worksheets, you don't really understand some topics, then that's a perfect time for you to come and hang out with me during some office hour time. Come ask me some questions. I'm, I'll be there every day, Monday through Thursday, and I'm more than happy to help answer questions. It's my whole job. It's what I love doing, so please don't hesitate to show up. Um, we'll also have homework assignments in this class. They'll be given one homework assignment every week. It'll be roughly assigned every Thursday and due roughly every week um, next week by Wednesday. So you'll have you know uh, six, seven days or so to get that done. And these are graded, okay? So these will be taken for a grade. You are based on accuracy, not on completion. So you have to make sure that you're completing the problems well. And this is why it's so important that you've watched the videos and practiced with the worksheets. So when you come to these problems, they just feel like more of the same, but maybe just with different numbers. Um, that homework can be uh, completed by hand on a piece of paper. It can be completed electronically if you have a way to write your notes in an electronic format. Any way like that works. And then you'll just be required to submit those uh, via Blackboard. We'll talk more about that in a later video.
Uh, exams in this class will be given roughly every four weeks and those will be timed. So those will be assigned um, and given out during a specific time of the day. And so you'll need to uh, sign up for a time that you would like to take the exam and then complete the exam within a specified time limit. I believe for all of our exams this semester, except for the final, we have a 90 minute time period. Um, there will also be at the end of the semester a final exam that's comprehensive. It'll cover everything. It'll also be timed, but it will be, um, um, you'll have more time to do it since it is a final. Now with both exams, fi the final exam and homework assignments, again, all of the work that you complete will be uploaded to Blackboard. And you'll have be able to kind of see how this works because you'll have plenty of time to kind of practice with the first assignment. Okay, a couple other quick things here and then we'll end this video. Uh, classroom policies. Um, I'm going to be emailing you throughout the semester or placing Blackboard announcements up. And so it's really important that you check those frequently. You should be checking your email, you should be checking your announcements every day or at least every other day. Um, you can also go ahead and feel free to shoot me email questions and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I possibly can. Typically I'll be able to answer an email that comes in before 7 p.m. each night, otherwise I might be able to answer something the next day. Um, here's going to be the basic grading structure for our class. We're going to have 10 assignments, 21 points apiece. We're going to have four exams, 134 points apiece, and a final at 250. If you add all this up, there's a thousand points in my class, which means that this is the easiest class ever to calculate your grade. All points in my class are created equal. If you get a point on a homework assignment, it's just like getting a point on the final exam. No points are worth more than others. All that matters at the end of the day is how many points you get. If you can get 900 points or up, you get an A. 800 to 899 and a half, you get a B. And so on and so forth. However, I have to draw the line somewhere. There's gotta be some cutoff for where the A is. And so I just draw it at the easiest spot. If you want an A, you need 90% of the points. If you want a B, you need 80% of the points. So the 900, 800, 700, 600, those are kind of strict cutoffs. Okay, um, for homework assignments, I'm going to go ahead again and let you kind of read through a lot of the material here. Um, the first thing that I'll point out, though, the only thing I'll point out is that there actually will be 12 homework assignments this semester, but I'm only going to count your best 10. So that's kind of a way of me giving you kind of two free passes on homework assignments that maybe don't, don't go well or you accidentally turn in late and they don't count for credit. Um, but things that you can use then to kind of get around having, you know, an unfortunate mishap. These homework assignments, the two lowest, will not be counted towards your grade in any way. Okay. Um, we also have some other things here for homework guidelines. Uh, this is very, very important here. Um, notice that for uh, for homework, the things that you should be able to use are things like your calculator, your notes, um, and formula sheets that are provided uh, that we'll talk about later. But one thing that you should most certainly not do is copy sources that you find online. Um, if you are found, and it is really easy to find, people that are copying work from online sources, you will be asked to either, or you will be asked to meet with me to explain your work. And if it's apparent that you cannot explain your work, even if it's just on one single question, you'll end up receiving a zero for the entire assignment. If this happens two times, I will have to report you for academic dishonesty to the college. So please, please, please don't go ahead and try to do this. Uh, the homework should be fairly straightforward and fairly simple if you've been practicing the ideas. And if you haven't or you need help, please, by all means, let me know. Okay. We have the same sort of policies for exams. Again, I'll let you go through and read through um, all these policies here on your own so you are aware of how everything works. I don't need to go through and explain all of that, at least in this video. We have some tentative dates for our exams. We have a final exam policy you should be familiarize yourself with. And finally, we have, the, uh, or we have the same exam guidelines that we did for the homeworks. If you're caught cheating, you get a zero for the entire exam. If you're caught cheating with a group of students, you're only as strong as your weakest link. And if any one person can't explain what's going on, everybody in the group receives a zero. So don't cheat. Don't help other people cheat. 
uh, it's it's not a good thing. And I, I, I think on last semester uh, in this class on the first homework, I caught six or seven people cheating on the first exam. I had to meet with, I think, eight people cheating. It's really easy for me to tell when it's happening um, because, again, I'm very familiar with the material and chances are you may have never seen anything with statistics before. So it's hard for you to know what looks suspicious and what doesn't. Um, the last thing that I'll mention here is just how to be successful. I've already kind of laid that out, but it's important to do again. Watch the videos. I have tried to put lots of hours, hundreds of hours into producing videos for this course so that you can learn the content. Please watch them. Okay, that's why they're there and stay on pace with the calendar. Come to office hours if you have anything that's unclear you need to ask questions about. Complete all of the recommended homework, that is the worksheets and the regular homework assignments. Do quality work. Actually invest, like dive into trying to learn the content. Okay. Uh, don't be afraid to ask me questions, even if it's something that you might think is silly. Just ask it. What's the harm? Okay. Um, find classmates who you can work with. Sometimes showing up to office hours is a great way to get to know some of the other people that might be in the course. Um, and we'll talk more about that in the office hour portions of these videos. Um, it's also recommended that you spend a minimum of two hours studying for every one hour that you would spend in class. So since this is a four credit class, it's recommended that you spend eight hours per week working on this course. Now that may or may not be possible for you in your schedule, but that's the recommendation. Um, and so I highly advise that you at least start with that. So hopefully you can start on a good foot. And if you need to make adjustments thereafter, you can do so. The biggest thing here is that while this is a math course and in a lot of math courses in the past, you've been, you may have been able to just kind of memorize some different concepts and regurgitate them on a test. In stats, that does not work very well. You have to work to understand the concepts beyond just a step-by-step -step procedure. If you just kind of are learning where to put the numbers on the page, but you don't really understand why things go where they go or how things are working, you'll find that the class is much, much harder than you might anticipate. If you do work though, to get that understanding, you will find this class is actually fairly straightforward and actually very, very enjoyable because it relates to a lot of the things uh, that we see in our everyday lives. Now, again, I'll leave it for the, the rest of the syllabus for you to read over on your own. Please be sure, though, that you do go ahead and read through fully these exam guidelines and homework guidelines. You understand the policies for what happens if you are caught cheating in this course and make sure that you complete the academic dishonesty survey that's going to be located within the same folder in which you found this video.